Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's Sam. <laughs> you got your whole body into that one. That I, was, if you're not uh, watching on the video, I was trying to make it poppy. Part of the reason they kind of a pop jazz pop feel. Jazz. Yeah, that yeah. there was there was definitely some lead singer, jazz singer dance moves going on. There was like, and James. James. That was off. Sorry, guys. That was flat. I was flat. I was off. Um, we have a lot to talk about today. Busy show. We have a lot to cover, a lot to go over. People have questions. We have answers. Weird never sleeps. Weird. James, never been a truer statement. Weird never sleeps. So much going on in the world, in our lives. Um, We've got a great show for you guys. It's a busy episode. We have a lot to cover. We have the Trans-Allegheny, James' thoughts on the Trans-Allegheny. We have some weird news about some, and I've kind of taught you, told you a little bit about this, but oh. I want to give the full story of the men that were found deceased. Yes, that was a very strange-ass story. I'm excited house. to hear more on that. Crazy, kind of a true crime, weird true crime story, um, which I love, you know, I kind of love. Obviously, you know, I'm a big true crime or girly. No. No. And this is a weird true crime. And, you know, I'm interested to see if you guys have heard of this case and or if you're interested, you know, for weird news, if there's like a weird true crime, you know, like a case that's like, huh. Dun, dun, that's dun. Bizarre. Um, And then, of course, we have, well, we do have a weird watch this week that is weird. But it's also like something that I've also been interested around the North Sentinel Islands. Oh, I love um, this one. This is North an Sentinel exciting island. This is an exciting watch. Then you know how weird, you know, how weird, unreachable these islands are and what goes on there. And then, of course, we have weird secrets. Spoiler alert. I'm going to give some views on that. Oh, you are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, there will be views. So, a lot to cover this episode. Um, James, let's start it off. How are you today? Big day for James. It's, I mean, I just I have to speak Football about day. the Packers. Yeah, they're not playing, so it's hard. Yeah. But to relieve that, that angst, I called into one of my favorite Packer radio shows. Thank God. Thank God. Out of Wisconsin. And... That was what they were talking about. The discussion was around, are you watching the games today? And of Packer course, Nation is, is not going to be watching. A lot of Packer Nation is split. They aren't watching. Oh, really? They're calling in vehemently saying, not will not watch because it hurts so much. Yeah, we're recording this on the Sunday of, what is it, AFC? Is it championship it's games? Champi it's division championship division weekend. Championship it's championship games. weekend. So, yeah. So Conference championship weekend. Yes. Sorry. So, um, big day for James. But... It's been a week, and of course, last episode, we were in West Virginia, which is crazy. Like, I feel like that was, like, years ago. That was, was last like, week? I know. What I the hell like, happened? I feel like it's been No wonder we have so years. much to talk about. That feels like it was a month ago, honestly. <laughs> but that was last weekend. Holy. Um, If you haven't seen, obviously, I did make a vlog of the trip from us leaving to getting there, all the weird stuff we saw. I've heard some very good feedback from random people about your vlog. So I'm I wanted you to know that. I'm everyone liked yeah, it. Yeah, there are know? people that enjoyed it. I'm going to try to do more of those. There's so much work. <laughs> like the uh, and especially it was more tricky with like all the ghost hunting stuff because i had so much footage because a lot of it was us just sitting there yeah for like hours and, and you gotta wait yeah and i had to go through all of it and like of course i know you guys want to just sit there and watch for an hour of nothing so it was like i had to like go through pick all the good spots so it did take a long so it's not gonna you know as long as editing is where blogs. the magic happens i have a feeling that and again, here, spoiler alert, I haven't seen the whole vlog yet. I, I should probably get on that. I should asshole. probably do that. <laughs> I had a busy week, too. But uh, the, when you do spend so much time editing, you're, the product you put out is amazing. Yeah. It is. So editing is where the magic yes, happens. Yes, I do all the editing, guys. I know. I know. It's And editing is. It's a lot of work, especially like 
like when I have to like look at my own face and hear my own voice for hours that's, at a time. That's why I don't listen to all these things because I don't want to see what I'm putting out there. You're much braver than I am. You're so brave. I'm so brave. Um, but we did. We I feel like we caught some stuff. If you guys, I'm sure we smile. did. <laughs> oh, they're so. We finally proven that there's ghosts finally first of all what i missed everything because i was drinking and watching the packer game yeah, James, and... they were like you know you we really make sure that everyone is sober here because it, you know obviously <laughs> don't want people drinking and you know doing this stupid shit yeah james had tall boys with him he, tall was boys. he was on his phone the entire time uh some people were very appreciative of many people asked me what the there score were, was there were there, were there was a shocking like, amount of people score? Score? and the manager of the whole like the night manager yeah, of the facility she, was like, she had a packer in, hat on yeah. when we walked in yeah there were a lot of packers fans who so funny walked them. in and there was like seven people with packer stuff on. yeah we i like, was so oh. excited i'm like oh my god this is per-. i was worried that people were going to be upset that i'm watching the packer game and i would honored it if i could have not watched the packer game in there you'd have just been without me for a couple of hours <laughs> Yep, that, that would have happened. That would have been a tough life choice. But honestly, I would have been sat out in the car watching the Packers. Sat out. Yep. And but there was a lot of people in there. So that yeah, was that was funny. Um, and so do you believe, James? That's the question. Everyone wants to know. Are you a believer in the in the afterlife? In the Packers lost. I had blacked out that entire place and it's now a painful <laughs> memory for me. Yeah. James still does not believe. I had many people trying to convert me, though. That was fun. Like, cause they could tell people were was, trying to scare him. They're like, well, do you believe? And I go, I believe I say my same. What I truly believe is I believe in other people that they have people, have people, people, be people. People's and I'll be saying peoples. this like peoples are peoples. The wisdom of the Muppets. If you haven't seen the Muppets take Manhattan, watch it. Great movie. <laughs> so if you believe, and I know you do and other people do, I have not had that experience, yeah. but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that something so doesn't exist in your own world. what did you think, like, when there were footsteps going off? I didn't and, like, see when it. when the cap fall. To be totally honest, I didn't see one darn thing that convinced me <laughs> one way or the other. But I got to watch your vlog, and you got a lot of footage, so. <laughs> James was so in his own world. Even, like, a lot of the times, like, these, you know, the people who ran the place were like, you got to just sit in a hallway and just be quiet and literally just sit there. And that really is a big one of the games of this, you know, the ghost hunting is just sitting and being patient. So can I be real candid on it? Yeah. And I don't mean to offend anybody. And especially if somebody who was in our group, there were we had some people that came over who knew you that were very sweet. Yeah. And I adored them. And I talked to her. She's studying to be a doctor. I talked to her for a little bit when she was trying to, well, do you believe or not? And I also said I was a little critical being a hunter. And having an, an avid hunter and fisherman in my youth, everyone there was doing the exact opposite of ghost hunting. And the ghost hunter people yeah. on TV, they sit there for like days on end. Yeah. And they have so much, they have hours upon hours. They have 20 they times as have much. The resources. Way more resources. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying. They have way more time and we see so little of the stuff that you already edited through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where the magic happens. When you're hunting or fishing, you catch something or you see an animal that you're hunting when you're at your quietest. But yeah. nobody there could be quiet. Every well, time. was, I think, also just nervous and scared too. Like That's the beauty of not believing. I in no way, shape or form even felt scared for a second. <laughs> like nothing got me. We at one point... Yeah, that was the one thing is everyone you got, thought you, they were a ghost hunter. And, and that there killed were some me. people who came with like 20 different toys, and you know, like all these like people. One girl had spent like $200 on like this machine that, you know, and James is like. I love it. That's all fine and dandy. But if you can't sit and be silent with yourself yeah. for an hour, you got no business hunting. Yeah. Well, that was just the being thing, critical. It's like no one could be quiet. You know, like that was they were like, you've got to sit in the hallways and just be quiet, be still. And none of these people can sit. I, well, quiet. I think it has to do with content, and I think it has to do with what they see on TV. It's yeah. kind of like you—you you were a beast of a salesperson, and the reason you were good at sales when you did corporate sales is because you could still be yourself, but sell. Most people that fail at sales see some picture of a scummy salesperson, and they become that, right? Okay. So it's projection. I right. think that all those people there just wanted so bad to act like the ghost hunter shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. which are all edited the same way. There's a bunch of fast movement and camera movement. And it's an action yeah, yeah, yeah. scene yeah. when really 
you, you, if, you, if, you, just sitting there. if you genuinely want to see it, you got to just, you sit, gotta just sit there. Even the experts told us that guy had been doing this 20 years. I, know, well, I think it was too. Like, again, like some of the people we were broke off into these smaller groups yep. and some of the people like just you could tell like if it's that quiet, like you want to make noise to like. You know, that's what you're scared that something is. That's what got noise. me. I would love to have sat there and been dead silent yeah, with James everyone. James was like roaming by himself. Like he would like go down like the end of the hall and he would be like James. Whenever there was like something scary, scary to, do. to do, James was like, "Okay, I'll go do it." He'd just like walk. He, well, James that's, just did not care. That, well, also, I was genuinely trying to come yeah, over you to were your side. To ca- yeah, I, and I know the only way to do it. The only way you're going to see something is if you're quiet. Yeah. See, I'm giving my passion speech about it now. But. Yeah, and we did, you know, and of course, James wasn't on his phone. You know, that's the other thing, too, is a lot of it is, like, looking at the aftermath of, like, look, going through everything and being like, oh, my God. You know, I heard, you know, there was something on the audio that, like, I didn't hear, but what was that sound? Anyways, so James is still undecided, but um, but it was a creepy place. Like, you can't – It you was get the creepy, such a cool facility. Like, did you get – like the feeling at all like you know <laughs> he's looking at me like no i'm just being honest yeah okay, okay. i'd rather be honest than make it up no, and say course, I, didn't. I didn't at course. all i think too i was not emotionally available for anything like yeah, after new, i was like, going through the packers snow. in my head yeah and like, but could have smacked you in the face and you'd have been like the it, man, it, during the silent times i really enjoyed sitting there thinking i was hunting like I was genuinely trying to use yeah, stuff. Like you, like, re- you really, it is. Yeah, hunting. you have to just be quiet. Well, that's why it's called ghost hunting. Yeah, these people, the people. We it, read, it's it's, it's so a nice. cool study on human behavior. People get there and they want to be ghost hunters, so they act like what they think they see on TV versus right. what it actually is. Right. Right. Um. So anyway, so watch the vlog. It's about a half an hour long, and you know, I think it's definitely haunt i mean the place obviously over like twelve thousand people died in that place the the two places that we've been that three places that we've been right one of them was that jail though but that's in philadelphia if a place was haunted savannah georgia and there were the two that i would say like again when you're hunting an animal you got to know where is the animal going to be if you're but you don't always see them right if you're going to find them those that was one of the spots yeah 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 and i think it was, you know, but I don't even know if I would ever like you can do private tours, too. I don't know if I could you handle that. I don't know if I could. If I went, you could like if it was me and you. <sighs> I, I can't because keep you you'd be a like <laughs> a realist. <laughs> I'd use logic. You'd use logic. And that's annoying. Um, anyways, so check it out. <clears throat> More, you know, maybe check out the vlog. Doing, yeah, check out the vlog. Tell me know, how it is. It's. It's always, it's funny, it is a very sensitive subject. Like, I definitely did get some comments and some people saying, like, you know, I, you know, how dare you? Like, I, you know, this triggered me. Why? Um, Because they, you know, they have family that have been in mental health institutions. And I do. And they feel like we're disturbing. I know, but it, I, I know. So, I was like, I've been. <laughs> like, I've been, yeah. You know, so it's like. Everyone's uh, allowed we to be. We were being respectful. It's not like we were going in and be like, trying to, like. This also that location also supports that community for a lot of revenue. And the and it is like a really big educational site of like here's what they preserve the past it was like. They've preserved it very well. Look, that thing could have been torn down if it yeah. wasn't doing this. So those people yeah, that are triggered. I no can one, appreciate that yeah. you're triggered. Toughen up a little bit. But yeah, honestly, not everyone gets a participation trophy. I hate participation trophies. That place would have been tore down if they weren't doing Cancel this. Cancel them, guys. And Cancel them. they would have turned this yeah. thing would have been turned into like condos or who knows what yeah. else, right? Yeah. yeah. But no, it gets to be a historic, a pretty much a historic site for yeah. people to learn what was wrong with the, and the country. And so at history the time. never repeats itself. Why do we learn history? Why do we, you know, learn so any history? Oh my so God, great point. It. And the hour tour at the beginning, even though that was during the Packer game, I paid attention to that. Those guys yeah. know their stuff. Yeah, the history of the place, or just the history of the treatment of the mentally ill and disabled. It was, it was really eye-opening so to those of you that get triggered imagine having somebody in a facility like that and because that facility exists your family didn't have to go through that exactly james wow wow way to tell him james tell him i get triggered by people who get triggered (laughs) i'm triggered by triggered learn something 
Any hoozles. Um, weird watch. So this was something I have always been fascinated in the North Sentinel Islands. If you have like ever watched documentaries about like illegal, pl- like some of the most illegal places to go or like some of the really scariest or most dangerous places to go in the world, you've probably heard of North Sentinel Island. OK, so a documentary came out last year called The Mission and it's on Hulu. I think it's on Disney, too. But it was about this guy named John Chow, who was a missionary And he believed it was his mission, God's mission, to go to North Sentinel Island to try to spread Christianity. And if you know anything about North Sentinel Island, you know that it is what they call the most unreachable group of people. Meaning that this is an island that, I mean, they have been by themselves and their own, like, independent community since the beginning of time like even like in the 1700s late 1700s and then again in the late 1800s explorers would try to go to this island and would be pretty much shot at and shoot away good for them (laughs) there's about they guess there's about 300 to 400 people that live on this island it's off the coast of india and it is this tribe of people that they call the sent Sentinese, I think I'm pronouncing that right. And they have their own like um, language that they speak. They have like their own roles in the community. They're pretty much, they're self governed. And India just kind of like lets them be. Like they're kind of like, no one go there. It is technically illegal, like from the 1950s, because people would try to go near this island. They actually, even two fishermen who were just trying to fish near there, were shot by these people love them yeah i'm a huge fan they were of these shot people and murdered and so they you know the indian government was just like you know what let's just make it illegal for anyone to come within five miles of this island they can pretty much live on their own because it's dangerous now for anyone to go over there number one you're going to get shot at number two they like you know we can expose them to so many diseases and that was what had actually happened to like at one point someone had tried to go on there and like almost killed off half the population because I think it was like smallpox or some you know, some And that's probably why disease. they don't let people on there. And that's one of the biggest things is anytime any white person tries to come on the island, they either spread disease, a bunch of them end up dying, or again they like tell them these stories of stuff that they're like, We don't want that. We don't want technology. We don't want yeah religion which is what ends up happening with john chow so this guy they tell that it's a story of this guy john chow who's really he's young he's in his 20s and he believes it's his mission and they talk about this idea of like the messiah complex of people you know who you know think that they're basically god in a sense and that they're just going to open up to him because he's uh you know a the missionary and it was you know God, he's got a little grandiosity complex. Yeah, God had told him that he is the one to do this, and they will listen to him. And the thing was so crazy too is like he tried to go to the island. He has the Bible in one hand, and they shot at the Bible, arrow straight through the Bible. Ah, I didn't see that part. Yeah, that's great. So and. Even the fishermen that he got, like he got these Indian fishermen. He was like, I'll pay you this amount of money because everyone's like, we can't go over there. Like, I'm not risking my life to go over there. Yeah. And so it's illegal. So those fishermen ended up getting arrested, too, for bringing him over there. But the fishermen are like, let's go back. Like, they're shooting at you. Like, you're going to die. Like, if we stay here, you're going to die. And so they go back for a little bit. And then he's like, I want to try one more time. He's like, I think like now, you know, they've seen me. They're not going to be scared of me. And they really don't know what happens because he was journaling all of this. You know, he was journaling when he goes over and gets shot with the Bible. And he's like, oh, this is so disappointing. But this is like God showing me like this is Satan's last stronghold on the world. And if we can get these people converted to Christianity, then Satan will no longer be on the planet. And we can save the planet by the word of God by, trans, you know, converting these people to Christianity. So he's like, this is my mission. So he goes back and then the fishermen know that they shot at him, dragged his body on land, and they have no idea what happened after that. 
And they're like, they never recovered his body. Apparently, the Indian government tried to go over there. And this is, I think it's just like, oh, what year was this? I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Um, but I think it was the 80s or the not. No, it was, he was on social media. It had so to, he was on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hold on. When was it? No, it was in 2000s. Had um, to be. 2018. Yeah. It was 2018. This was... So it was pretty recent. So the Indian government even tried to go over there and recover his body. And they were like, no. They were shooting at them, too. So they don't know what happened or what they did with his body. They they believe they like they had tried to fly a plane over and helicopter over. And they thought they saw him them burying and like making a burial for him but i mean what a crazy story if you've ever um been interested in what's the formal name of it again the mission the mission if you're it's it's a good documentary i mean i know i just like basically covered the entire thing um but you kind of already know spoiler alert that he's you'll figure gonna die. The, st- like, the, the journey is still good yeah the journey of it is still good it's really interesting they interview other people who have thought about doing this mission and they even there's a couple other islands that this one guy this other missionary had tried to go to and he's like it is so hard if people who don't speak the same language don't like really write you know or like most of it is in symbols and you're trying to explain god to people who have never even heard of the concept and they just like could not grasp it like you know they would ask questions these people would be like so have you met this guy you know like have you met or like have you met god God?" and they're like he's like no but like you can feel him and he's like but like, do you know anyone who knows God? See, I love these people you know? more and more. <laughs> and they're like, no. And they just like could not grasp it. And they were like, well, you know, so it's just, you know, at the end of the day, they're like, leave these people alone. Let them. They are happily like have their own community. It's like we can't try to explain them and try to convert them. Like, just let these people live their lives and it's really interesting and it is like kind of one of these things you know it's always like this ongoing joke on social media like one day i'm just gonna like you know sell everything and go like live in the mountains or like live on an island and it's like it is crazy to think that there are people still to this day that are living on an island with no electronics no technology no wi-fi literally hunter gatherers what a beautiful thing kind of a gorgeous thing so like if you can't sleep at night you know, or like you're going to be like, I could just like go to the North Sentinese Island, Sentinel Islands. I could like just put my put yourself on the island far, far away. This was the one where I need to share my views. I know okay. I've already talked a lot. Yes. I'm on fire no, today. You're, no, I feel like talk, I got some good stuff. The the, I love the these podcast. topics. This is actually ex- exactly related to what you said before. History repeating itself. Right literally whatever your religion and people you know many times when you're speaking to anyone about religion or politics you'll immediately be bucketed like if you're if you're not republican then you're a democrat if you're not no there are plenty of people that aren't any of those things there are countries that don't know what democrat and republican is just because you say something doesn't mean that you're automatically the opposite that's your brain tricking you human brains are wired to find right and wrong Back to religion, right versus wrong. Yeah. Fact: More Either people have died at the Satan. more people in this world over time have died at the hands of religious choices yeah. than pretty much anything else. Or people trying to impart their views on others. And I'm going to use some really horrible examples, so I'm sorry. But more people that died in the Holocaust. Yeah. What we did as a country with Native, Native Americans. Americans. Mm-hmm. What's what happened with slavery? Mm-hmm. All of these things are about people trying to forcibly impart their wisdom, what they think is right on everyone else. When what if back to the Muppets, you just let people be people. I know. And there is like, listen, there's, you know, they also could make this case that some of these islands, you know, that they had, you know, gone to like they've given medical care to like, even Fiji, like looking at an island like Fiji. Like, they kind of look at it as, like, Christianity, it was this beautiful thing. Like, they came and brought us clean water, and they brought us vaccine, you know? And, but they still live a little bit like they, like they want to live. Which is great, which I love. Right. 
Right. So there is, you know, this, but totally. And, and I think too, it's hard because in religion, you are told if you believe in God, you got to go out and share, which is fine. And I'm not saying for people not to do it. Right. Your but example of Fiji was are like, I don't want to exactly like, With, then keeping to leave well it. enough or no. That's right. the part that I'm getting to yeah, yeah, yeah. is when it's forcibly imparted. Yeah. And it's like these people have made it very clear. And if they shot an arrow through his Bible, right. that was on purpose. They chose they're, to they're, not like, kill him. They like, said, I'm yeah, not going to kill you. Interested. That dog's growling at you. No, nope, I'm still going to pet it. I'm still going to pet it. So that's when people were like, OK, you know, OK, try to go. They shot an arrow in your Bible. And he's even hit. got two fishermen telling him, like, yeah, they're like we dude, need to turn this around. This is stupid. Yeah. No, even like people at the missionary were like, this is kind of insane. Like, this is like literally a death sentence. But I, I think it's such a good lesson. Again, learning from history, right? So history doesn't repeat itself. There's a religious war going on in Israel yes. right now because we as people still can't let this stuff go yeah. and leave well enough alone. And let people be people. Yeah. Well, didn't think we'd be getting into a religious <laughs> and political all at the same time, but <laughs> it kind of comes down to that. It, it is, does. but it is. It's a, he's peoples doing it because of religion. Be people. I guess just... I would guess I wish it was that easy. I mean, I know oh, obviously it's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but anyways, good documentary, crazy topic. Like it is again one of those places that it's like. I always just think it's really cool. I, you know, again, I would not want to disrupt anyone but it would be cool to go and like see a tribe that is hunter gatherers living off their own land like they everything that they have and they need is on an island there's actually some good old documentaries about some of the other peoples that they found over time like when they first i think it was there's there's a really good one i think on the aborigines and australia yeah. and like how they lived at certain yeah. times so yeah, there's, there's some, good information there's out lot. there on it. there's a lot of it Anyways, to transition to another topic, talking about more. Okay, also talking about Weird Watch. If you guys are true crime, paranormal fans, we have been watching HBO's new True Detective, which came out. HBO just puts out good stuff over yeah, and over just, and over like, again. Yeah, you just really can't go wrong with an HBO show. But they have a new season. Obviously, if you've watched some of the True Detective, like each season is supposed to be its own separate like kind of season, can live on its own. This fourth season, there's two episodes out. There's actually another one coming out tonight. Um, but it's about Alaska. And now I really want to go to Alaska. I mean, you know I've already been. I love Alaska. Yeah, James has been to Alaska. Um, I it, I just, the travel agent that booked us for Fiji. Yeah. She just posted that there's Alaskan cruises. Oh, yeah. And you leave from Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And you do it, and she's like, it's like one of the most... That's what me, my dad, and my brother did. We did an Alaskan oh, cruise. Alaska. <gasps> but we, we were do that. But you got... We had longer stops. Oh, cool. Wait, no, well, it was I'm at the end. I've never been to Vancouver. We did an Alaskan part. cruise, and part of it, at the end, you get off, and then we did like a two-day Alaskan train tour, where Ooh. you took a train up into the woods, so you get to Anchorage, and then you take a train up into... There's like one of the last major cities and it starts with a j oh i don't know the i'm name, trying but, to think I, it's, but I was, and you t- the, but it was funny that she just happened to post yeah. that i was like oh my god we were literally just watching a show about alaska it's the most gorgeous train ride like i've ever been on. you gotta go to alaska yeah i'm 100 like that in. should be our next like big trip maybe later this, this year the, you want to go in the summer oh, well you'll really? want to go in the summer yeah, 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 no yeah. it's good you think you th- i make i talk about wisconsin cold that actually that's be, not even like Wis- july we need like a break from the heat here we go to yeah. alaska it still would it still could be very warm that's it's always sunny yeah oh true not oh, now wait not, the, not above, you have to be above the arctic circle for that right. the reason the arctic circle exists it's where that line kind of yeah, goes when the we earth is the angled on the other line. so the earth is at a 23 degree 23 and a half degree angle towards the sun Facts. and it it's goes facts, so when it's away the arctic circle is pointed completely away from the sun no light whatsoever yeah then it comes back it gets a lot of it the in anchorage which is people you can't even fathom how big alaska really is versus when you look at a map yeah. like yeah. there's I, I can't remember there's like six i don't know there's a bunch of texas's a bunch of texas's fit in alaska it's, yeah. it's, it's ginormous huge. yes so the southern part 
yeah, you're going to still have night, but yeah, it can be so cool. Yeah. yeah. So now we wanted to go to Alaska. Great show. If you're interested in like paranormal, true crime stuff. Um, but again, there's only a couple episodes out. But we were watching that and it's similar. Alaska's supposed to be one, of course, the haunted side, but Alaska also has some like your alien connection stuff. <gasps> Literally, there's so much history talk about history and like folklore that comes out of there and just culture different culture that i would love to experience also tons of animals so cool animals that so I've never seen. many all the huskies anyway so we've been watching this show obsessed with alaska but someone had told me to watch this show based on a premise of these men being found frozen alive outside and if you haven't been listening to this case, I'm going to cover it really quickly. So we're skipping from weird. the show to the news? Yes. We're going to the news. Weird news. News alert. I'm trying to find better ways to transition. People have given me feedback that, like, sometimes we have pauses or, like, weird, like, transitions. I'm trying to make the transitions I gotta, we'll make a, we'll more put a, sense. We'll put a whiteboard up there so we yeah, can know where we are. We'll have, like, every transition. Like, we are transitioning so, see, to another topic. Maybe we need to put some fake commercials in here. I'll write some fake commercials to yeah, promote yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, until we get a sponsor. Gosh, darn it. Um, But the weird news story of the week this is a crazy story this is the one i was talking about that's like a true crime weird story and if you're in kansas city area you've probably heard about this and i was telling you a little bit about this one is bonkers just a crazy story true story this happened last week it really doesn't have anything to do with the chiefs other than there were three men but technically four men that were watching the chiefs game i forget what the guy's name let me make sure what his name was hold on pause 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 so i make sure i'm saying this chiefs game sorry guys oh my god as i said i'm not gonna pause and i'm pausing oh my god can you believe no mysterious death what is his name what is his name his name was his name was clayton david jordan (laughs) Glad so, there wasn't a pause this this time. <laughs> Great job. So this guy's name was Jordan, lives in Kansas City area. He has three of his best, they say best friends, you know, good friends over to watch the game, to watch the Kansas City Chiefs game. They're over there watching the game. It's a cold night. They're ha- drinking. They don't know if they're drugs yet. The toxicology report hasn't come back, but they're hanging out till midnight. Jordan says at midnight, he walks his friends to the door. They leave. He goes to bed. Jordan goes to work the next day. He worked from home. This guy's working from home Monday and Tuesday. Obviously, the game was on a Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, he's working from home. He says he doesn't notice anything weird. Turns out his other three friends have gone missing. His family members are banging on Jordan's house. They're calling him. They're Facebook messaging him. Apparently, Jordan had opened the Facebook messages from friends and family being like, where are our three friends? Obviously, like the there was a fiance of one of the guys being like, where the hell is my fiance? Like calling, banging on the door, coming over to the house, banging on the door. Finally, on Tuesday, I think it was the girlfriend of the fiance of one of the guys comes over again and goes to the back door to go bang on the back door and again jordan is not answering but he's home he's home technically quote unquote working from home and notices the three men deceased on the porch laying down in a singular line all three of them frozen to death she calls the police police show up they knock on the door jordan answers he comes outside in a robe and a glass of wine and is like what's going on i have no like i haven't noticed anything He was ignoring all the calls from his friends and family. He was technically, quote unquote, still working from home. But he says he takes sleeping pills at night and he puts headphones in and he says he did not hear anyone. He doesn't remember getting messages, even though it says that he had opened them. And his friend's cars were still like on the street next to his house. So his friends never really left. The thing that's so weird is like, okay, so say they were all drinking. Maybe they did some drugs. They're not sure. They left. 
you know, and then if they were too drunk or something or like notice they got locked out, he's in a neighborhood. So they could have just gone to the house next door. They could have just got, you know, like called on their phone, like they had their phones with them. So it's like, how would they have not if they really were that messed up? Someone didn't notice them either yelling outside or, you know, again, them going to a neighbor's house or going close by somewhere to be like, hey, we're locked out. We're messed up. We need help. That's the weirdest part is that they were literally like passed out in a row on this guy's deck. He has no idea what happened. Obviously, the biggest thing is they're waiting for the toxicology report. Like that's kind of what people are guessing is maybe they did some drugs that they shouldn't have went outside to smoke a cigarette or something and they just all passed out and Jordan, the friend forgot about it. But it's just, again, like even if you woke up, you passed out Sunday night, you woke up Monday, you're like, Oh my God, you would have been like, I hope my friends are okay. I hope they got home. Okay. Yeah. You know, like you would have at least thought to check on them. Just bizarre. And the, the conspiracy, the dark side of the internet says, Jordan was a scientist, really smart guy. He worked for like a major pharmaceutical company. Oh, the rumor of the dark side is maybe he was working on a weird. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm laughing. Where are you so at crazy. with the whole with this whole thing? It you, had to have been drugs. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, apparently also another rumor that's going around is because, of course, like the girlfriends and friends of all the, you know, these guys are like you know, posting like something's weird, something's fishy. One of the girls was like, we had heard that Jordan also deals drugs on the side and they might've been doing Coke, which might've had fentanyl in it. That's which my, there, that the fentanyl poisoning thing makes, that's the first thing that was in my head yeah. is that makes the most sense at this point. Yeah. Cause everything you said, there's no way that all three guys are going to be they're so big guys. they're in their 30s like these are like big adults these aren't like young kids you, uh, look i can still you know anybody any one group of guys drinking around football we can get right. super hammered but right. there's no way that all three of them are going to be so drunk that they just pass out from out, beer right, right, all okay. at the same time all at the same time one the of same. them might but right. then one might, right? And then somebody, one of them is going to be at least right. cognizant enough. And if the door's locked, like you said, if we heard even yeah, one of our neighbors screaming neighbors for a while, 50 feet next we month. hear everything. Like yeah. we're going to see if there's something that bad going on, somebody there is going to hear yeah. them. Yeah. And I have family in Kansas City. There's a lot of nice people there. Their neighbors would have helped right. them. Yeah. Like exactly. There's there's got to be more to this thing. Yeah. So just like a really bizarre, weird story. But again, you know, even if it was like a drug thing, you know, it's like, why wouldn't he have helped his friends? That's why maybe people are like, well, because he was a drug dealer. He didn't want to get in more trouble and be like, I was the one that gave it to them. Maybe he had to get rid of all the drugs. That was the other thing. But yeah, it's like, you're just going to leave him out there. You know, and like 100%. hope that eventually. It's just, it's a very weird story. Very do you, bizarre. Do you want to hear my probably totally incorrect but human behavior side of this of course you said very important detail and what? we you know true crime the details are important yeah he came to answer the door in a robe makes sense but if the cops are there somebody who is not guilty is going to put that glass of wine down you're not going to stand there and carry a glass of wine wine around if you're yeah, being he liked to drink a lot he was a drinker but you're not going to set the beer down if you're going to set the wine down even if you are a drinker you're going to set the wine down if the cops Drinking are there. In the middle of the day on a Tuesday. If you're guilty, if if you're innocent and you honestly don't know that someone's back there, aren't you going to be so shocked that the cops show up that you want to at least seem sober? Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to put your wine down. Yeah. So if he's just being over casual, that's an over casual response. And when somebody is right, overly, so weird. when someone's overly casual, but something is bad at their place, they're probably guilty or they at least know about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. my take on the whole thing. Very I strange, bizarre case. Obviously, will hopefully the toxicology report will show, you know, because if there's no drugs in the system, then it's really like, no, we got a crazy oh story. That's a crazy story. Well, so, remember, it was record cold temperatures, it was record cold temperatures for Kansas City that yep. night. Yep, it's just very bizarre. So anyways, that's your weird news. We will keep you posted. We'll see what happens. Um, But 
I mean, like check in on your friends. That's just like the that's the weirdest part for me is you like I would have you know like we're always with our friends. It's always like let me and I mean I guess this might be different with guys in Kansas City, but it's like let me know when you're home. You know, check the next day. Oh, are you hung over today? But oh, if I had friends at my house and it was record cold outside. I'm going to at least drag their drunk asses inside and let them sleep on the floor. Like, right. Just drag them in. Right. So there's something weird there. I don't know. Something weird. Anyways, I think it's time at this point. Transition, transition, transition. Pivot. Pivot. Transition. Four. Secret, 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 secret. That's the key to the transitions. A song. You need to write more songs. Damn. All right. If anyone has any weird news, um, weird watch songs. We could get like a news station. You know, they have that cheesy oh God, music. Like yeah, we need a bu- we need buttons. We need buttons. I need sound effects. I'm we gonna need, need sound effects. We, I, need, we need sound effects Guys, and that's buttons. That's the next upgrade. Yep. <laughs> the bikes for the first nope. Really We're gonna bikes. download some crazy sounds and I will, James will be reacting with them. <gasps> um, all right, you guys, as a reminder, you can always call in to us at speakpipe. That's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod to tell us your weirdest secret. We've been trying, you know, that's the other thing a lot of people too are like, we like when there's a theme. You know, we just need some more solid good ones. So just call us in with whatever you got. You know, if it's this week, we have a weird paranormal one that I did sneak in just because we were on the topic of it. We've got some weird drugs. Drugs. And we got queefing, you know? So it's just, you got a weird story. You got a weird date story. We've had a lot of really great dating stories. Love or like hookup dating stories. stories. Those are always like a classic. Um, and I was trying to think too, like this time of year, like if there's, you know, it's always kind of nice when there's a topic, you know, like we're on the holidays, like weird holiday stories, but it's really just like depressing winter time. But we got some good ones. We do, and we got a big plethora of them. We got a big uh, um, influx over the last week. So, with that being said, James, are you ready for the freight? Prepared. For the okay. Here we go. Hi, guys. Um, in lieu of your spooky episode of the Lunatic Asylum, I just wanted to share a quick little, like, ghost story that I have. Um, when I was like 16, my family and I went to this like Northern California beach house. And, um, while we were there, I was like in one of the back rooms and I started to smell like chocolate chip cookies baking. And like, that's a very obvious smell. Everybody knows what that smells like. And I go out into the kitchen and nobody's cooking anything. And I was like, okay, no, it definitely smells like chocolate chip cookies. Like what is going on? And everyone just kind of looked at me like, okay, well, who's this crazy lady? Well, come to find out, my dad actually emailed, this was back when there was no social media or anything. He emailed the owner of the house that we were staying at and mentioned that I smelled that. And she came back immediately and said, that's insane. Like, this was my grandma's house. And we always baked chocolate chip cookies with my grandma. So I just thought that was like a fun little, like, not spooky ghost story, but like a cute a cute little ghost story. I love a cute little ghost story. The smells are always interesting. The smells are always interesting. That was one of the things, too. They had said a lot of the trans Allegheny. And, like, if you watch any ghosts, you know, ghost adventures, ghost hunters, that's always a big thing is sometimes you have these mysterious smells that come up that just don't make sense. Cookies. I love that. That would, you know, obviously that would be, like, a nice, especially, like, that is, like, a nice memory one, you know? Like, obviously there's happy memories around cookies. One of the things that they had mentioned at the Trans Allegheny is a lot of like cigarette smoke, which is always yes a popular one. Like sometimes, especially if you have like a smoker, a cigar smoker, sometimes you'll smell the smoke. Um, one of the things that I had mentioned in the vlog, if you watched the vlog, um, is when we were downstairs in the Civil War era. Yes, part of the building, we went in the way back. There was where they did laundry. Yep. And I don't know if you remember, but there was like this faint smell of laundry detergent. Oh, yeah. I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah. And it was really weird. All of a sudden, it like smelled like laundry detergent. And we're in the old part where like they did all the laundry, all of the uniforms and all that were being um, where those were getting taken care of. And it did smell like laundry detergent. 
this falls under when we were watching funny enough the weird watch of true detective mm-hmm. last night there so not too much of a spoiler alert but in any you know there there might be some paranormal connections to yeah. this true detective yeah. and a guy actually described it really well last night he said well if these entities exist they want one of three things yeah. remember what he said yep. they he said oh my god now i have to remember all they, of them they want to tell you they miss you they want to tell you they miss you they want to show you something yep or they, they want, want to take, take you with, with them, them right those are one of the three yeah. and so the the cookies i think the smell of cookies is the they want you. to tell you they miss you yeah. yeah yep um so i totally think that that is a sign for sure and again it comes up a lot whenever you watch you know any of these ghost hunting shows or whatever you always hear a lot of that perfumes is always you know you smell the perfume yes of someone um but yeah but that is it's like a nice memory it's not that they're trying to scare you it's just like hey i loved this memory which is kind of beautiful um but i would want cookies after that no i know now i'm hungry um but thank you so much. That was a gorgeous, great love a little ghost story. Also, yeah, any paranormal stuff. If you guys have any paranormal stories, send them in. We could do. We had. We did it a lot over Halloween, obviously, with a lot of paranormal stories being sent in. But obviously, just kind of. I know it's a top of mind because we've been chatting a lot about the trans Allegheny place. But all right, James, are you ready for prepared next secret? Here we go. Oh. Is this thing on? Well, fuck me. I just wasted five seconds. Samantha and James, I don't even know where to start. Um, let's see. In sixth grade, I was a queef queen. Um, I had lots of tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> my sleeve. AKA my badge. Um, I would literally hold them in, bring people into the bathroom, and I would like do tricks like a toe touch. Or I'd like do little skits and like plant them in to my skits and get huge fucking reactions it was magical and honestly I didn't think about this until y'all were talking about queefs on the pod so thank you so much for reminding me that I was the queef queen in middle school all right what's next holy shit when James started talking about the hidden like underworld or old tunnels and shit in um, Turkey was this in Istanbul because I totally forgot but a couple years ago 2019 I was on a work trip in Istanbul with some of my coworkers, and we were having breakfast one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in my entire life I'll send you a pic um but we were at breakfast and our waiter told us that there shit I have to hurry our waiter told us that there was this tunnel underneath in this underground world under their restaurant and that it was just getting uncovered in 2019 like they were just finding it And we didn't believe him and we thought he was going to kill us. But then we were like, holy shit, let's go anyway. If we die, this is a cool way to die. So we followed him into the tunnel. Okay. There was so much. We got a lot to unpack there. (laughs) One. Things going on. I I, want to lead on this one because the queef, the sixth grade queef queen thing. Talk queef about queen. weird and proud. Talk no, about like, the whole reason that this exists. You need exists. a shirt that just says Queef Queen. Yeah, definitely. That's a beautiful, beautiful, And it beautiful. is like such a gorgeous trait and like trick that you can do. Like I have said this before and I'll say it again. I I wish I could queef on command. It's it's a talent. Imagine, like she could be, you could be eating a sandwich, doing one of your sandwich bites and yeah, then and queef then right queef. after. Oh, yeah. That would really get the kids going. I was really good at lighting farts in sixth grade. What? Oh, I could light a good fart. James, how are you just telling me this right now? How did you not know that? I swore I've told you that before. With a match or with a lighter? Either one. Just need Can fire. Can you do that and put it on TikTok? Yeah, I'll put it on. I'll light a fart. <laughs> you would just light it just to see how big of a light you could get? Or yeah. like, would you oh, yeah. like light something on fire? You, no, you'd like to see if, how big of a like. Boost. Should we do like who can fart, make the biggest fire? I'll plume? teach you how to light farts. Okay. Sounds like a life skill you need. I'll, and then I'll try and see if I can light a queef. Um, but I don't think any gas comes out of a queef, so it might not really. No, I think it's just a... mostly air. Damn. Damn. Yeah, you need the methane. You need, you need methane. that coming out. Um, yeah, no, the queef is such a gorgeous trick. I love that for you. Um, and then the underground, James. I'm looking up. It's, I don't think, I think Darren Kuyu is now the town. I don't think it's near Istanbul. No, it's not. It's but <sighs> Turkey is notorious for having a lot yeah, of underground. So much history. One hundred percent. There's underground stuff in Istanbul that they haven't. Oh yeah. Any sure. ancient I mean, cities any have these this. Ancient, oh yeah. Paris even sure. is. And Paris right. is not as old as these cities at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. not even close. And Paris has stuff like that. Oh so, my god, I want to go to an underground. I want. I want to go. go don't at the same time. I want to go see Darren Kuyu. Like that's the number one one I. Would I really see. would love to go to Turkey. We have so many places to go. Uh, time. Turkey also doesn't have to be the underground one because Gobekli Tepe is in Turkey, which I brought up last time. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the two that. Like, I know. I would Turkey. love. I mean, Turkey and Paris Alaska, those too, are... just to go to the Paris catacombs. I've never been to Paris. Me neither. I would love to go. Got to put that on the list, too. Oh, my God. Darren uh, Kuyu in Alaska, for <sighs> sure. Yeah, those are our Those, I trip. love those. <laughs> we go on the most random trips of all time. I'll take that over a Most beach people tra- go to, like, Bahamas. Still, I would occasionally the beach vacation, but it's good, do, to, like, it's good to, like, it's good to mix it up. Yeah, Fiji had the best of both worlds, but Turkey, Turkey's got a lot of beaches. Turkey and, um... Yeah, I would love to go. That is, t- Turkey has always been on my list. Paris is really one of those cities that I feel like either people hate or they love. I've never really like wanted yeah. to go to Paris, but I would just to go to the catacombs, like honestly. I'd like to go just walk to around. Go I'd the, love to do that. Yeah. Well, there's also a 300,000 year old, uh, there's a cave that has, uh, is it 30,000 year Paris? old? You no, know, in France somewhere, there's a cave. It's called the Cave of Dreams that what? has like, 30,000 year old caveman paintings in it some of the <gasps> oldest known cool. paintings known to man there's a really good documentary on netflix about it yeah, i think James i brought it up in season one. Oh, I, I can't miss a good documentary on that you stuff love yeah doc. cave of dreams i think it is really good watch if you like that sort of thing what? yeah it's one of the most it's some of the oldest like paintings that they found by humans and it's in france hmm. like cave drawings well 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 gotta get to france Oh, uh, all right, James. Are you ready for? Oh wait, did we miss anything else with this? Again, stunning, stunning. There was a lot. There's so many good things. There in was there. so much going on, but I think we covered most. Of fart, queen, well, fart queen, underground stuff. Queef underground stuff. Queef Love queen. That. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say queef queen, queef queen. What happened when you went to these underground tunnels? Because you kind of cut off at the end. You were like, and then we went, and then we thought we were gonna die, but then we went to the underground. Tunnels. I kind of felt like that was a live action call, like it was like a CIA like <laughs> call. Did She's like get, trying like, to hide it up. Down. Yeah, it's very, well um, done. But what happened? Tell us. Call us back. And All make right. sure that it's under stressful conditions again, so you sound like you're. In, yeah. Yeah, you sound like you're in a rush. Don't call in a relaxed sense. I think that that added to the the yeah, quality of the, the call. Of it. Um. All right. Here is the third. Here we go. So I actually have a question, you know, like for education about gummies. Um, how do you feel when you take them? Is there a certain amount you take? I definitely did it wrong, or at least I hope that I did it wrong. Um, because around Christmas time, I was working from home. I worked for myself and my husband came down and offered me a gummy and I told him I would take half. So I only had half, finished working, jumped on the treadmill, lost track of time, started feeling lightheaded, noticed I'd been on the treadmill an hour. So I was walking slow and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump up, go upstairs, take a shower. And I don't know how to explain it, but everything kind of seemed very horizontally-ish. So I make a shower and I have a wave like hit me of time slowing down. And my husband had always mentioned this. So I kind of started laughing uncontrollably. And that's when I realized I was 1000% claustrophobic of my shower. What felt like hours was apparently only like minutes. And I was hoping my husband would come to my rescue. But I had to come to the conclusion he was not going to. So I pushed myself to get done as fast as I could so I could get out. I survived. I thought that was the worst until I got to the living room and my heart was pounding out of my chest, like 175 beats per minute. I know because I looked at my watch. So now I feel like I'm dying. I'm having a heart attack. I'm going to die and be dead. My husband won't stop chit-chatting to me. And all I'm trying to do is figure out if I'm about to die because I really didn't want to have to call 911 and explain this. I briefly thought about throwing up, but figured it wouldn't help to get it out since it had already been a few hours and I couldn't even stand up at that point anyway. So basically just laid there watching uh, the Christmas movie for Christmases where let me tell you, Vince Vaughn is a real treat while on gummies, but, and I didn't notice things I never noticed before. Anyway, I waited about a hundred hours to finally feel like it was after 9 PM to try to sleep it off, but it took 24 hours to finally feel normal again. So what did I do wrong? Or is this just the norm? Okay. Listen, as a gummy expert, first of all, you got to start really small. Some of these people I feel like who have horrible experiences take too much. You have a horrible experience. You never want to do it again because like any substance you take too much, you're going to it's not going to be good, which if you have heard of my, my, my mushroom story, then, you know, um, 
which we do love a drug story. If you have any, please call in. Well, your voicemails. We've. I'm going to talk. What we got a lot of nurses that listen and have always called in. Oh, yeah. we need to some nurses', nurses? opinion on this. We're going to need your opinion. I need you guys to call in and tell me about a patient that's coming on. Drugs. Replay that so that you make an accurate diagnosis because I do yeah. have a diagnostics. Because I was potential. so close to calling 911 when I was on mushrooms. Thank God we didn't. Thank God I didn't. Like a lot of times, you got to remember too, especially. You know, and that's why I really only do if I'm going to do anything weed. Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. Um, gummies or um, shrooms, because you really can't OD. Like you're really the the worst is going to happen. You're either going to pass out, but you're or have a panic attack. Like literally, you might have a panic attack. That would be the only way to get close to that feeling of like, am I going to die? Is like when you feel like you're. Like your heart is beating out of your chest, but you're not gonna die. And there are a lot of ways to calm your heart rate down. And especially if you have a buddy or you have someone you can call or, you know, luckily uh, have James, James yeah. to be like, you need to breathe. Um, but you're not gonna die. And I think that was always, you know, always eased a lot of it, especially when you're going through that. But anyways, the number one thing is making sure you're taking the right amount. If you have like, if you're not, a toker and you never ever ever participate i say like start at like one gram and it can be tricky because a lot of these gummies i mean some of them now are 50 grams in one little gummy that's what it sounds like to me i think she took like 20 milligrams yeah so it can be confusing no you're like it says 50 grams but it's this little thing so if i just take one bite and you're like yeah but one bite is still like 20 grams you know or even 10 and that will for someone who never touches it that's going to put you into a rough. Did position. she say she'd never really done much she, of it? I think before? she said she'd never really done it. Her boyfriend gave her half. Well, if she's asking for advice, that means too that she doesn't know enough. Because I. Right. About I always want to know, like, how well, much what, is like, in you this? Count is like one gram. And that's why, even what's really nice too, and like, that's why I always promote the nowadays stuff, because they're really, especially for people who don't. It's controllable. It's very controllable. Even like sometimes with edibles, like, if you're not going to the right person or like someone makes them at home, it can always be off a little bit, you know, especially like if you're in a state where it's not, you can't just like go to a dispensary, which I obviously live in a state where it's legal and I have a medical card. So I go to a medical facility uh, and I get, you know, like these are like, it literally looks like a prescription. Like if you looked at the gummies, like they're not like fun, like colors and like fun flavors. It's like, berry and then it has literally like a prescription very medical label. yeah it literally it looks doesn't look like fun and cute but um but again it can be really confusing because there's just so many of these off brand and people making them at home and whatever so if you could like i would try the nowadays so of course it's like selfishly so use my code sam ram sell 15 oh yeah they get a discount yeah there's a discount um and it's like three grams in a shot. They have the low dose, which is, or maybe if it's is it two milligrams grams. or is it grams? Oh yeah. It's milligrams. I just want to be grams. clear here. Yeah, I keep saying grams. I, I there's milligrams. a huge difference between a, just because there's nurses that are going to help yeah, us here. Like, are you on crack? They know the difference on dosages, yes, right? I mean, milligrams. <laughs> just be Thank sure. You. Sorry. Thank you. I keep saying grams. I meant milligrams, but you would want to do like even like half of that and then like, wait, and then you can always take the other half if you need to, but Start with like one to two milligrams and that's. Can I throw a little diagnostic shade out here? All right. So there's a lot of things we don't know. And then when you're trying to diagnose something, you've got to get as many facts as possible. So I'm going to make some assumptions, right? That she doesn't have like high anxiety, right? Like if she does have high anxiety, that 170 heartbeat per minute could be normal, right? So let's say she doesn't have high anxiety. Sounds like she's in pretty good shape. She ran for an hour on the treadmill, she said. Well, well, hi. Yeah. So here's what I'm throwing out there. Being a former avid runner, don't, don't do that anymore. Uh, but r- having run a, some marathons and run for hours and hours on end, I, it sounds a lot like that you did hit a level of a runner's high, which does mimic morphine in a way. Actually, I think it's, yeah, well, I think she was walking. I don't think she was literally running on. Gummies. I thought she that said she was running. Incredible. I don't know. I think she, maybe she walked. was walking. But here's where I'm getting to. Actually, I think it was a combination, a combination of a low of blood things. sugar, yeah, and low f- and low blood sugar and shower, low water. It's really hot, and yeah, it's... and she probably sipped on some water or took a little food. But again, if she hadn't eaten in a while, like that, just sounds like a combination, yeah, a combination of like a runner's high, low blood sugar, 
probably a little bit of dehydration and then throw a drug in there that your body is trying to process out on top of that and a drug that you don't know how much you took of. I think that you just hit all of those things at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just say for me, like there also are different strains, like for me. And again, the tokers out there will know, like I can't really do sativas or even hybrids like sativas can normally like, you know, it almost is like a little bit of an upper version of a strain of the devil's grass. So it can be more in like your head and some people can get more of like a rush to do things. Um, it helps with like focus sometimes, but an indica is more like a lot of people say indica into couch. Like that's really more like a relaxed sleepy time, nighttime. I call that my nighttime sleepies. That's what I call a Manhattan. Yeah. I so prefer like, the I prefer that stuff. I prefer an indica because it is much more relaxing and more of like a little bit of a downer and it's perfect for nighttime. So like I would say and the nowadays is. So I would stick try like 1 milligram if you have the ability to like try and measure or again do like the nowadays and Make sure it's an indica. Eat something. That's always, you know, if you're not eating and you have an empty stomach, that's always an issue. But it should feel like just a relax, like you almost like had a drink in a way. You know, like if you are a drinker, like you had a drink, um, you're normally giggly. It has this euphoric feeling. But also like some things aren't for everybody. You know, like I know some friends that I've, you know, given them the gummies that I like. I've given, you know kind of my my little nighttime ritual and some people just are not they're not gummy people and that's okay everyone has their own little thing um so that's what i would recommend i think what you said is the smartest knowing you're so good at the dosage thing like you really do understand that for yourself so knowing knowing what you're taking well, especially like after the shrooms meltdown, right? Just like took the whole bag. <laughs> You've been like, more critical. On, I am gonna be I'm gonna know what I do. Everything that I take and not just going like uh, I'm just gonna take the whole thing, see what happens. Um, yeah, just make sure you're really measuring it. Make sure you're getting it from also someone you trust. That's with any substance out there. There's so much going on in the world and weird stuff. We and just weird gave the strains. Kansas City the Kansas right. City example. You know, it's like you just never know where it's coming from. So if you can get it from a dispensary, get it from someone you trust. Because there's always it's just there's weird like all these bodegas now sell these like off brands like Delta Nine, Delta. There's all these like different types of strains of weed that aren't really it's just it's kind of a weird world out there. So if you can, if I don't know what state you're in, but go to an actual dispensary and make sure you're getting something that you know what's in it. Or grab a Manhattan. <laughs> James. James and James is a drinker. He just that's always your if you you know, you want to relax. That's my wanna, drug of choice. That is, you know, we all have our little vices. We all have our things. But that's what I would recommend. Let me know. Check out nowadays. Again, Sam Ramso 15. <laughs> Use my code. Um, but that was a great secret and we love, yeah. If you have any, um, nurses, I would die to know you guys always have the best stories. I love the stories and maybe a diagnostics on this story. What do you yeah, think I'm it sure, was? Well, I'm sure I'm They probably sure run into something like this where somebody overtook a gummy has come in and gone no to the matter. Yeah. If they're gummies or shrooms or they I didn't have no James there what. to make sure they didn't call 911. Yeah, exactly. To be like, it's going to be okay. Um, I would love to hear some of your stories or yeah, if you've taken too much of something one time, that's not too scary of a story. Call us in at speakpipe at speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. Again, it'll be in the description. It's also in the Instagram. So make sure you're following us on Instagram at weird and proud pod. Follow us on YouTube. We would love to get, um, our YouTubes bumping and grinding. We're trying to make that a premium experience for you guys and trying to do some more fun vlogs too. So make sure you're following along. There'll be some exclusive content on there that's not on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere else. So anything else, James, you want to say? Go Packers. I hope they didn't hear that. I think I just burped in the microphone a little bark? bit. Did you queef? No, burped in the microphone. Queef. Maybe a little bit. A mouth I don't know. Queef? We'll find out. Mouth queef. <laughs> we hope you guys have an amazing week. We love you so much. Love you, weirdos. And we'll see you next time. Love you, weirdos.